Seriously, with the amount of mana we pay for Behold the Beyond, why do we have to discard our hand? I mean, tutoring for three cards is really good, but why such the big drawback? I mean, technically speaking, it's not necessarily a drawback if we have madness cards that we can also cast at the same time, but still, why the hideous drawback? Nonetheless, I still like this card because tutoring for three cards is really powerful, so I guess you could just say, uh, discard your hand, tutor for a new hand of three cards. Still, I think this is a pretty good card. I think some casual players will love it. I, I that, that drawback, though. Ugh. Speaking of drawbacks, I still think the drawback on um, this big, ugly mythic demon here is still kind of unnecessary, but I still kind of feel like he'll see some standard play, mainly because Delirium is not that hard to achieve with him. Now, let's talk about Relentless Dead. Um, jeez. Uh, where do I begin with this thing? Um, yeah, if zombies ever become a thing in Standard or Modern, this will definitely be in it. I mean, dear God, talk about value sauce. This is just nuts. I mean, it, it, it comes back if you have a mana open, which of course you're going to take that extra turn to keep your mana open. And it, every time it does come back, it, it brings back friends with it. Or at least has the opportunity to. Bottom line is, if you are a casual zombie player or are thinking about trying to make a competitive zombie deck for standard or modern, this is definitely going to be in it. I know some uh, Grim Grim the Corpse Warren decks in EDH or who play it in EDH, and, and they're going to love this card. And, and seriously, if zombies, if more zombies do come along in um, standard or modern, um, yeah, you can expect this thing to be there. Speaking of a zombie that you probably will be seeing in Standard, how about this uh, Diagraph Colossus? I, I mean, sheesh, with, with Breathless Dead, I mean, think of all the value you'd be getting with this. Bottom line, if you love zombies, get both of these cards. You're gonna love them. I know Breathless Dead's kinda at a high price tag the last time I checked, but I think it'll go down a little bit. But if zombies become a thing in Standard, expect this to be pretty high. You know what's better than one Zombify? How about two Zombifies in the form of Ever After? That's right, you get two creatures for six mana from your graveyard. And uh, while that might seem steep, keep in mind it's two creatures for six mana, and that can be any creature in your graveyard. And you you, you want to get back your big ugly mythic demon? Be my guest. He's, he's, he and a buddy are coming right back. You got two of them? Hey, wow, six mana for two four fives with flying and trample? Yikes, that is, that's, that's spicy stuff. Bottom line, I think this will be a great casual card. I don't know about Constructed so much, just because of the price of the mana cost, but, but I think it's definitely for graveyard synergistic black decks or decks that use black and EDH. I think you're going to really love it. So this next card I'm actually really, really, really excited for. It's an alternate win condition. It's called uh, Traska Deck of I'm excited for this because it's an alternate win condition. Yay! However, one thing you have to keep in mind is the card actually checks if people have 13 life first and then adjusts the life total after that. So basically, you can easily push someone in the direction that you want to go. It's just not always going to be guaranteed to stay that way based on the deck you're playing against. Nonetheless, I think people can easily make a deck out of this or brew a deck to be very synergistic around this. I really like this card. I'm, I wouldn't personally love to see lots of decks run it, but um, it depends on what's going to be coming out in the upcoming sets. If you love alternate win conditions, this is definitely worth it. Get it. Get some. It's going to be the sweetest feeling in the world when you win like this. Trust me. To the slaughter we go, and we're kind of attempting to replace Hero's Downfall for uh, arguably a more pushed mana cost in the sense of ooh, two and one black. Um, making an opponent sacrifice a creature or Planeswalker is swell, especially if we're going up against Hexproof creatures, although there really aren't any in standard at the moment. I, I really do like this card, just mainly because of its versatility, and that Delirium is epically sweet. If you're planning on playing Constructed or Standard Constructed, and I think I could see this play being played in other formats as well. Um, this is definitely something to keep an eye out for. It's definitely going to see play. Get some. I just wish that sheep hadn't had to die. I mean, do you think, 
you would think this big ugly demon would have like wanted to eat something else. I mean, just 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 a little sheep. I mean, that's so cruel. Next on our list is another card I'm really excited about. It's Elusive Tormentor, and what's not to love about this? For starters, it's a 4-4-4-4, four, 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 which is well, strictly playable. I mean, that's always good, a 4-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. However, it's also a Madness Enabler. So you can also just, whenever you like, just pay one mana, discard a card, cast it for Madness, and it will transform. The neat thing about the other side, the Insidious Mists, is it's hexproof and indestructible. This means that whenever it becomes the target of something, if you pay the activated ability cost to discard a card and transform it into Insidious Mist, it will make the spell useless because they cannot target it nor can destroy it. Now, of course, you still have to deal with things that sacrifice it, and of course, Languish is going to kill it. But there are a lot of things that aren't sacrifice a creature or languish and I feel like this is gonna be a really really sweet card it's gonna definitely be playable um, essentially after turn five it's gonna be really hard to kill this thing you're, you're, you're gonna have to play some mind games with your opponent if you're gonna want to kill it for sure but the great thing about the insidiousness is once you're attacking you can basically get in there for unblockable damage you can even start attacking as the Tormentor, flip it over into the Insidious Mist, and then flip it back into the Tormentor to get unblockable damage. There's just so many crazy things this card could do, and I, I think it will definitely see some constructed play in Standard, at least. It may even transfer into other formats, as a 4-4 in other formats is not always easy for some decks to deal with. Bottom line, get some of these. I'm sure they're going to drop in price, but if they do see some play in Standard, they probably will maintain some of their value considering they are flip cards and are exclusive to this set. They are great though, I'm definitely going to get some. Going on to the subject of um, Dark Confident light creatures, I know we've had several um, Dark Confident wannabes in the last like three years or so. Up next we have another one in the form of Asylum Visitor. Now. Um, this is actually really neat because its ability triggers on all upkeeps. So if you're playing a deck that likes to use hand attack to get rid of your opponent's hand, um, there's a very good chance that you're going to get this ability on your opponent's turn as well as your own. Another nice thing about this is it has madness, and what's not to love about that? Bottom line is I think this will actually see some standard play, although I think Dark Confidant is definitely still better in modern. Um, a 3-1 for two is always nice. It's a nice aggressive creature, but it also gets you cards. And paying one life when you're being aggressive and you're winning is not a problem at all. I'm sure you'll find a way to get that life back somehow. And it's just meant to be played in aggressive decks or decks that like to use hand attack. If you use a deck that is like this, get this card. It is going to be good for you. You're going to love it. You know, you can look everywhere in the house. Just, 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 just don't look under the floorboards. There's like zombies there, and 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 and, and they probably just don't smell very good. From under the floorboards is a card from the X Madness cycle that is currently incomplete, but it's not a terrible card. I feel like this is very nice in token decks, especially if token decks in like EDH or casual players like to have something to discard the card and get a lot of zombies out. It's gonna be a, have a home in those decks, and getting life is also a sweet added bonus. Um, bottom line, if you have one of those decks, get it. I'm sure it's gonna be affordable. It's also really sweet, and if you love zombies, th this is this is definitely a card for you. Also, it's probably not best to look behind the scenes either. This enchantment is well known for giving your creatures skulk. So um, if you run lots of little tokens, they're gonna really benefit from that. If your opponent is playing nothing but fatties. The better news is once they get through, they're going to be pumped. So if you run a deck like this with lots of little guys, definitely check this out. It, it could be very, very beneficial for you, especially in casual games. Now, honestly, the rest of Black's material in the set is mainly, honestly, madness enablers slash madness cards. At least the cards that I find like are mostly playable or are going to be tried to be played with. Black got two really good madness cards in uh, Giz's Bidding. Another nice one is the Biting Rain, which is an infest with madness. Um, this may not see as much play right now, considering we had a very similar card come out in Oath of the Gatewatch, which actually exiles the cards. But once that leaves, this may see some play. 
Another one is Murderous Compulsion, which is basically Assassinate with Madness. And I know not too many people are too fond of Assassinate, but this is Assassinate with Madness, so you can use it on attacking creatures or as a sorcery when your opponent's creatures are tapped. Now, aside from Elusive Tormentor, there are some also some neat Madness enablers in black as well. We have the ever-so-talked-about Era of Falconrath, which is a one-time Madness enabler that transforms into another vampire. I, I think this card's okay. Honestly, I think a better Madness Enabler or a better card for a Black Madness deck, if it ever becomes a thing in Standard, is the Pale Rider of Trustad. I like this a lot more than the, uh, the Vampire, because it's a 3-3 with Skulk, and that's hard to block. I know a Flying Vampire might get through some things, but a 3-3 with Skulk has to be blocked by something that's usually going to be weaker or not blocked at all by something bigger. Three power creatures are kind of hard to find nowadays and constructed, so I feel like this is kind of has a good shot of being used. Although I probably wouldn't always play it turn two because you won't be able to cast a madness spell, but I think it is a very good card, at least for what those decks are trying to do. Next, I want to talk about Pick the Brain. As nasty as that sounds, I, this card has a lot of constructive potential. The only downside is that it may not always work, especially if your opponent is just top decking or is just bluffing you with a land. But if you get this early in the game, you're definitely going to hit something. And if you're playing like modern or some format where a lot of decks rely on a certain card, this is an excellent early game play. And you do have to have Delirium to get its full effect, but still, it's a good card. And I, I'd like to try it out. I think it, it, it can work out. It's probably not as... How do I say it? Like, as effective as something like Surgical Extraction or Extricate, which the moment the card gets in the graveyard, you can get rid of it. But, but this is supposed to ha get, get the card before it happens. And I do think it will see some play. If not in Standard, it will definitely see play in other formats. One of my personal favorite cards is this Accursed Witch, that, which turns into the only curse in the format. Why aren't there more? I mean, you think with all the crazy shenanigans that are going around in Innistrad, you, you, you think there'd be more curses, but, but no, this is the only one, and it's, it's pretty sweet and pretty flavorful. Although it probably, sadly, won't see much constructed play. Ouch. Also, why the hell are there all these vampire children around here? I, I mean, gosh, Child Protective Services on Innistrad must really, really suck. Because seriously, I, I, I think these, these kids' parents must be absolutely devastated.